Hi all, this is Skate, and the other day I posted a video on the E75TS. And the general consensus of that video was, it's by no means a bad tank. In fact, I'd say it's a very conservatively balanced tank. But, well the video kind of ended up turning into an advertising jingle for the Lerva, because everything I had to say about that tank, I felt like the Lerva could do better. And I felt like I could have expanded on certain areas of that video uh, to be a bit clearer with my opinion. And then the next thing I know, the Lerva pops up for sale at an incredibly good value for money deal. Which is kind of strange, because that happened two days after the E75TS came available, which when you think about it is very strange. On one hand, we have a new tier 8 German heavy tank for £44. And then two days later, we get the Lerva for sale, fully equipped, with the camo, and 30 days premium, for just 6,500 gold. And if that wasn't sweet enough, gold is on offer at the moment. So where that other tank would have cost £44, this, with the premium time and the goodies, is £15. Now, many of us already have the Lerva, but if you don't, god damn it, there is no reason why you would buy the E75TS when the Lerva is available for that price. In fact, if you don't have the Lerva, stop watching this video. Go and buy it. Right now, go. I, I gotta admit, actually, it makes no sense in my head. Now, if you're a complete collector, which I think for a lot of people, gone are the days of being a collector in Blitz. But if you are a complete collector, you'll want the E75TS. If you're fairly new to the game, or you don't have the Lerva or the E75TS, in my opinion, there's no reason why you should be buying the TS when the Lerva is in store for that value right now. So releasing the E75TS and then putting the Lerva up for sale for that price, that was bad planning by someone, but if you are watching this video for that reason of just checking which one to buy, there's no shadow in my opinion. It's this one. And for more depth why, have a look at the E75TS video, because it is, like I said, pretty much an advertisement jingle for this tank. Now, that being said, I mentioned how I believe the E75TS has a weak turret. Or a weak turret face, anyway, because it's so flat. Nice rounded turret on the Lerva. The weak points on this are either side of the gun mantlet. You can penetrate that, providing you can hit it. The solution is this. Side scrape up, pointing your gun outwards. It's really hard to hit that one on the right hand side when the gun's poking out like this, and the one on the left hand side is completely concealed. In this circumstance, this tank is an absolute nightmare to deal with. That is the sort of angle you want to try and put your turret when dealing with tanks at that angle. But again, you cannot always side scrape. So if you cannot side scrape, the other solution for this tank is to use the 8 degrees of gun depression and wiggle, basically. In doing so, it makes those weak points on the left and the right of the tank, or the turret, really hard to contend with. Yes, there is a hatch on top which can be penned, but look at it, it's tiny. And those weak parts on either side of the mantlet are not big. So if something is pointing at your turret because they cannot see your lower plate, say for example you're using the 8 degrees of gun depression on a ridge, your circumstance to deal with that is very simple. Wiggle your turret left and right. That's how you produce more bounces off the turret on this thing. It's really simplistic. It's very user friendly in my opinion much more than something like the E75TS, which again is by no means a bad tank. However, this is just much better. It's more well-rounded, it's more user-friendly. So the turret on this thing, it's great. Yes, there's weak points, many turrets do, but the hatch isn't big, gun mantlet's fantastic, it's just those two on either side, not a big deal. A fairly simple process to contend with that, like we said, you wiggle left and right on the turret when someone's pointing at you if they cannot see your hull. Talking of hull, 
Side armor, fantastic, just like on the E75TS. E75TS is actually better on the side armor, but the frontal hull armor on this is much better. Front upper plate on this, fantastic. Lower plate. Lower plate, I stupidly said in the previous video, which I did put a correction in the comment. I said the E75TS has a 150mm lower plate, and so does the Lerva. It does not. The E75TS has 100mm on its lower plate. This thing has 150mm, which means you can actually get bounces off that lower plate. Against a lot of tier 7s, what I like to do is almost bait. You keep it in a track wheel just inside by the building, and as you're pulling out, it baits people to shoot at the lower plate. However, because you're at such an aggressive angle, you can produce bounces. If you overexpose and you show your lower plate and the track wheel, they're going to go through your track wheel like absolute butter. Easy. But if you're on one corner of a building and someone is on another corner, try and poke around at a slight angle, keeping you in the track wheel, and you'd be surprised how many bounces you get off that lower plate. So the armor really is its, it's so user-friendly, I think. There's three stages in my head. One, I'll try and use the 8 degrees of gun depression, I'll try and hide the hull as much as I can. If I cannot, two, I will go to the side scrape in circumstance and try and side scrape as much as I can. And three, if I don't have the option to do either of them, I will face hug the hell out of whatever I possibly can. By face hugging most things, your lower plate's completely hidden. This tank is very tall, which means a lot of tanks are going to be looking up at the front plate, which means that's going to be very effectively angled. And then you have a big gun mantle to protect it. And then you just wiggle the turret left and right again to try and deal with the weak spots. On top of that, you need to remember this tank weighs 92 tons. It's a behemoth. And that translates to lots of hit point damage from ramming things, especially if you can build some momentum. The negative to all that lovely armor and weight is speed there. The acceleration on this thing isn't all that great. In fact, this is an area where the E75TS does pull ahead slightly. When it comes to trying to go uphill though, both the E75TS and this Lerva are both very asthmatic. They will struggle trying to get up hills, and they will do it very, very slowly. Where this thing does shine in terms of mobility very well, though, is this traverse. It traverses, and its turret traverse is extremely quick for a tank of its size. So you can deal with mediums circling you surprisingly well. Can't chase them, granted, but in terms of circling and getting your thick armor on point and where you need it, you'll do it well. And before we get onto my favorite topic about this tank, I've just got to give a quick credit to and shout out to my friend Ifal. Now, this is him in this replay now. The previous replay was me, this is him. This is his first ever game in the Lerva. We were chatting in the office today, we were talking about the fact that the Lerva is such good value for money, as it is right now with that offer on. Um, and he mentioned, yeah, I picked it up last night and my first game out I got a mastery so I had to have the replay because I knew I was making this tonight and I had to include it for that reason so credit to him for his first game in the Lerva I was impressed and the fact he bought it as part of the bundle which we we're speaking about right now but that aside on to my favorite thing about this tank and it's not the credit making ability which by the way is also incredible my favorite thing about this tank is that absolutely incredible gun i mean the gun handling on this thing is literally to die for i mean okay check out this shot now he's ignoring the pershing on his left because he wants to try and keep his team buddy alive which is nice to see but look at that shot that you can pull off all day every day in this tank now one thing i didn't even touch base on in my video yesterday which is quite important about this tank is not just how good the accuracy is. I mean, I'm running mine with refined gun now, and with refined gun, you've got some ridiculous, like, 0.269 accuracy. Shots go where you want them to, but at shell velocity, I mean, the E75TS, with its standard AP, has 950 meters per second shell velocity. This thing packs in 1,150, which means you don't need to give much lead on anything. Here's the other thing as well. This is a premium tank. With good penetration value, amazing gun dispersion, amazing accuracy, just full stop. 
you don't really need much in terms of premium ammunition. Yes, you pack the premium ammunition, just in case you never know, but you barely need to fire it. So, not only is this thing full stop good on credits anyway, the fact you need so little premium ammunition means you make a truck ton to go with it. And there's a nice case in point, 142,000 credits profit and plenty of XP to boot if you wanted to free XP convert. Now I know I've been singing this tank's praise throughout this video, it's because I think it is a very good tank. Yes, there are drawbacks, we have discussed some of them and the way to negate them, i.e. those cheeks just next to the gun mantlet. I'd say the other one I want to touch base on quickly is Amorak damage. It does happen in this tank and it's not shockingly uncommon either. The ways to deal with that, obviously you have provisions which can help, I would slap them on, and you have equipment which will help, I'd make sure you put them on as well. The other thing is if you are tracked, don't immediately slap that repair kit. Have a quick look. Are you in immediate danger? Or could you get away with waiting for your track to repair itself? Because the next shot, you might just need it for your ammo rack. But that's it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.